share of veterans support group uh, to get more on this. Adam, thanks for joining us on the programme today. Great to, to have you with us. Um, Thank you, Daniel. Why do you think France and the UK uh, can help their citizens get to the airport, whereas uh, the US has struggled to set up such an um, operation to help their citizens leave the country? And I guess, how would you evaluate um, the evacuation strategy so far? Well, not that the French and British governments or their participation in the ongoing occupation of Afghanistan have been any more ethical than the U.S. as they have a slightly different M.O., way of doing things, and different motivations and incentives. And, and I love your coverage in this, and I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to insert into it uh, a little perspective and explanation of sort of how the U.S. federal government behaves in situations like this, how it makes war and why. And so as it is pulling the knife out of the back, so to speak, it wants to twist it. It wants to make a mess. It actually has a vested interest in the withdrawal of Afghanistan being as ugly as possible so that there is an excuse to re-engage with the country militarily. And there are serious safety concerns, um, you know, regarding the ongoing um, evacuation operations. Do you think more troops um, would be the answer here to ensure the safety of foreign citizens leaving and indeed Afghans who are also trying to, uh, to leave the city? Well, I won't pretend to know the tactical specifics of what's required for that proper evacuation. But obviously, the United States military in conducting this withdrawal is not doing it in the way that we know it is capable of. I'm so grateful for that quote you just shared, because, oh, we're, we're not capable? Uh, we're, we're the biggest military on Earth with the most money right now. Oh, no, can't do it. Oh, but the French and Brits can. Like, it's, you know, at some point you have to go, you, you, you really should have no credibility. And the fact that we, you know, talk about this as if the Afghanistan war was a failure is a real insult to the experience of all the victims, because it is to suggest that the architects of this policy are at all well-intentioned. This was perhaps the most efficiently profitable war crime in human history. And so I, you and me can say, well, obviously, if we had this humanitarian motivation, we would send in troops just to do this and we would provide logistical support just to do that. And because we have accepted a world dominated by coercive governments, by imperialist governments that project military power, that do everything that the U.S. federal government is responsible for and the evil over its history, we we accept, uh, at least we should accept, that, that like, things like this, uh, that, that uh, war criminals are going to act like war criminals. It really shouldn't surprise us at this point. And, and I take this as just a motivation to make sure that we all learn the lesson and never let it happen again. And obviously this, uh, you mentioned the, the biggest superpower, the most amount of money. You'd think that U.S. intelligence would be able to foresee um, what has happened here, but apparently they failed uh, to predict the very rapid advance of the Taliban. 90 oh, yeah. days, I believe, was the quote. The Kabul fell in, in, in a week or 10 days. Um, what are, do, you, do, you mean, do you buy that? Uh, what does that say about uh, U.S. intelligence in this case? I think there are a lot of sort of mid-level puppets in the system who might be saying that publicly, who believe it, like, oh, my gosh, we never saw this coming. But the bigger, you know, architects of these... The, the policy of the global war on terror, they know what they're doing. They set this all up. And it, I, I want to take this as an opportunity to point out that one of their MOs, one of their one of their general practices in making a, is, is just making a mess. Uh, but the other is blaming it on other people and then demonizing them. And right now that's the Taliban. And I'm not here to say the Taliban is the good guys. I mean, when I step back and I see people fighting over government power, it's like, I hope you both lose, all right? But with the Taliban being a lot closer to representing the people of Afghanistan as evidenced by their rapid takeover, as evidenced by the lack of violent resistance by the puppet military of the United States, 
I think there's going to be a lot of history of this period rewritten, but I'm I'm optimistic. Uh, thanks to programs like this, thanks to mine, Adam versus the man, thanks to living in the age of the internet, that we will actually really learn the lessons a lot more quickly than ever possible before. What do you think is the answer then to resolving in, in the short term um, what's going on, the scenes of chaos we're seeing in, in Kabul and the airport? And obviously in the medium and long term, we've had a lot of words of support and uh, words of uh, what, condemnation and worry about what's going to happen. If sending in the troops isn't the answer, as we've seen, what needs to happen? Well, again, I'm going to shy away from trying to call the particulars of the logistics on the ground. But I do want to point to two overarching solutions here that anyone on Earth can be a part of that are very important. And one, uh, I get this headline from uh, goodnewsnetwork.org. The Internet raises six million dollars in one day to rescue Afghans targeted by Taliban. And this is uh, Quentin Quarantino's GoFundMe campaign. Uh, after just a day, over six million dollars raised. So getting foreign aid in a conscientious outside of government way to Afghanistan right now is very important. The inclination of the American government, by the way, is blockades, embargoes, which technically, uh, ethically speaking, are acts of war. They're saying if you trade with this person, we're going to violently stop you. And if anything, we need as much trade, commerce, love, support, charity and attention. And right now, if that's raising money for logistics and transportation like this incredible GoFundMe campaign, I wholly support those efforts. The second is that the Taliban coming back into power is under global scrutiny like never before. And I think actually trying to hold them to their word about having evolved since their uh, prior rule in the 90s, that they want to be inclusive, that they want to respect women's rights, at least to the extent possible under their idea of Sharia law. Again, not defending the Taliban, but hey, they're, they're the rebels that just defeated the empire. So, you know, a, a part of me is cheering for them, but I think in terms of making sure that that international scrutiny is there with a sense of support and empathy for the Afghan people, that they do not live under a regime that doesn't represent them, you know, as they have for the last sure. 20 years. OK, Adam Kokesh, chair of Veterans Support Group, thanks so much for your time. Great to get your insight today on uh, what's going on uh, in Afghanistan. Thank you.